Hi everybody, welcome back to another Lombard example of Kubernetes. In this example, we're going to run the bus staple set. Specifically, you're going to run your application on Kubernetes with staple status. A lot of the application you can run is a stateless application, just like a microservices and a cloud every application. But some cases, you have to run staple application uh, such as a PostSQL and a distributed database and distributed cache uh, along with your own business application. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, what stateful set is. As you can see, the right side here is the YAML code snippet. How do you can specify stateful set with the YAML uh, syntax? It's a little bit similar to deployment on the Kubernetes. If you, you don't have any chance to watch it, the previous video, please watch it that how to specify how to deploy uh, based on deployment and the replicas in the previous video. Okay, so stable set is very similar to uh, define deployment configuration. You can specify service name, which is a little bit different than uh, deployment YAML file. And you can also uh, specify replica, how many pods will be created when you create a staple set and then there are more and more uh, specification uh, you can uh, define when you run staple set so with the staple set you can manage the deployment and the scaling part how many part based on replica so you can uh, specify like a three two uh, at the initial time how many part will be running on your kubernetes and then you can guarantee the ordering and the unique so like a id a network identifier for your application so here is a quick example, and then what kind of use case are you gonna use a staple set? The first thing is always you needed to run your application or software as a staple rather than stateless. So here is a good example with a persistent storage or network identifier. As an example, I already mentioned earlier, the Cassandra distributed database or distributed cache, like a infinite span or Redis. You need to run that uh, stories part with the uh, with a staple rather than uh, just uh, randomly deploy this, uh, any worker node. This is more order the grasp deployment and scaling. And then you have uh, when you deploy the normal applications, for example, the Java application or Python application on Kubernetes, you can find the automatically generate the pod name with the specific characters. But when you deploy the same application with the staple set rather than deployments, you need to find uh, order the numbering at the end of the, your part name. Okay, let's get into the demo, how it works. So here's my uh, existing Quarkus project as actually to do application. So first of all, we, we need to specify our the service uh, YAML file, which allows me to create a header list uh, service. It's a little bit different. Uh, the normal services, the only different thing is, as you can see, the cross IP is none, and the other is always the same. So here's a quick example to specify and define the staple set to run the PostSQL with the uh, storage like a PVC. So the kind of staple set and a metadata. So one uh, specific uh, occasion you have to do that and select a match label which is exactly same under the template meta label the same name in this example postgres and then the, the other part which is really similar when you create a deployment uh, such as event variable like a process get password and the username and the database name the here is the interesting part you might have you need to use the storage class to add or attach your persistent storage into your staple set part. So in this example, we're gonna use a my dash storage dash class as a class name, and then this Kubernetes cluster uh, will be uh, create automatically uh, your storage. As you can see here, the storage class YAML file. Uh, how to define that? So uh, we're going to use the Amazon uh, cloud to run Kubernetes to attach storage automatically. I already run my Kubernetes cluster, which is OpenShift by Red Hat. You can actually uh, have the, uh, the single node from developer sandbox. When you go to uh, developers.redhat.com, you can uh, sign in for free and then you will be uh, getting a new cluster in five minutes. Okay, so here's the empty project uh, or namespace. 
run by example, and uh, there's no resources found, which means uh, I'm going to uh, deploy a new staple set and head a list of ser service here. Go back to my uh, terminal, and then I'm going to try to uh, make sure uh, I'm the right namespace run by example. And now I'm going to uh, create a new header list service using uh, that YAML file. And then I'm going to try to uh, create a staple set uh, to uh, apply the process case staple set YAML file. Okay, which is awesome. So let's try to uh, go back to my staple set once again, just to make sure how many replica I defined and a three, which means that PostSQL will be created three paths automatically based on staple set uh, specification. So we have a two part is running and the, another one it will be going uh, soon. In the meantime, when you go to press the volume claim, so you can find there are ordered uh, EBC name like a data dash postgres dash zero dash one and the dash two will be coming up soon and here's the my storage class and then this is one of the beauty of the OpenShift cluster uh, by the way you can find a uh, nice dashboard that you can uh, find all detail of your uh, Kubernetes resources here okay when you go to pod you can find the three pod with the ordering zero one two and then go back to uh, PBC are person the volume claim and then you can find another uh, like a three PBC attached with the our existing pod. Okay, switch it to developer uh, perspective, which he allows me to have a more graphical UI as you can see three pod. I'm gonna add a label uh, to uh, showcase this pod as a post SQL icon and then the runtime PostSQL, which he allows me showcase the PostSQL call, which he made me distinguish the other application part because I'm going to deploy another application, like a to-do application on Quarkus. So I just deployed the staple set, and now I'm going to uh, deploy a uh, Java application to connect to the staple set uh, database. So here's my quick example. As you can see, there's a SQL file to create uh, a few value such as create a staple set is my actual to the list for this demo and then uh, the one of the beauty of the Quarkus you can specify any database that, uh, driver so previously I actually used in-memory database h2 which he let me just use the cache data or the in-memory database rather than actual database but I needed to deploy this application in production environment like a remote Kubernetes to that, I specify PostgreSQL, uh, and then here is the database name to do, and then uh, the service name PostgreSQL, we already set it uh, deploy in the Kubernetes cluster. The Quarkus CLI or Maven package tool uh, allows the developer to build application, deploy Kubernetes cluster automatically, uh, which behind the scene, uh, this process includes uh, uh, packaging your application based on fast start and then deploy application based on container image. Now you can see the Quarkus application and then when you go to uh, runtime logs, you can find the three uh, data is already uh, created. When you go to endpoint, you can find uh, three uh, to-do items. I just done, create a staple set and head list service and then I just deploy application. Let's try to add a new to-do list to make the, make the next demo for the number example. In a recap, today we're going to learn about how to create a staple set for your application as a staple status. Thanks for watching. See you next run by example on Kubernetes.